Right, good morning Year 7. So today what we're going to be doing is a bit of an introduction into something called electromagnets. Now, just to give you an idea, hopefully all of you should be able to state examples of electromagnets in society, so where they're used. Um, most of you will be able to understand the link between magnetism and electricity, and some of you identify the factors that affect the strength of an electromagnet. Now, this would have been a practical that we would have done in class. We would have actually built electromagnets, and I hope that next, uh, when we're back, we will get a chance to do this. So, last lesson, you learned that around a magnet, there are magnetic fields, and the reason they attract is because a north pole attracts a south pole. And the reason they repel is if you put two north poles together, they'll push against each other like this. Now, one of the things that scientists realized uh, about 200 years ago was that Earth has a magnetic north pole and a magnetic south pole, but they also started to find a link between electricity and magnetism. And it's one of the fundamental forces in nature that we don't often think about. So, firstly, we use electromagnets all over the place. A school bell, for example, uses an electromagnet. Um, a dump yard crane will use an electromagnet, and speakers use an electromagnet. Okay, so very quickly, can you pause the video and just write down those uses, and then quickly jump on the internet and look up any other uses of electromagnets and list those. Okay, so welcome back. So as well as the three here, the bell, the speakers, and the crane, we also found a few other uses for electromagnets in our homes, in society, and you can see they're really, really extensively used. Now, what scientists discovered was this. So in a few moments, you're gonna to have to draw this. So, as we know, electricity flows in a circuit from, say, something which is positive to negative. So if I just quickly draw that in there, and that. Okay, so electricity will flow along a wire from positive to negative, essentially in a circuit, okay? Now, slight little change, it's not quite that simple. So <clears throat> what we would do, is we would draw, say for example, a simple circuit diagram. Now hopefully some of you remember this, but I'm just gonna sort of illustrate this down here. There we go. And then just like this, a really simple circuit like that. I'll leave a bit of space for a light bulb just because that's something you're familiar with. Okay, and then this is a battery. And then I would draw in a very simple light bulb. And then just quickly do a little adjustment. Bear with me a moment. Okay, now we haven't actually done electricity yet, so this probably won't mean a great deal to you. But what happens is electricity flows out of the positive end of the battery and into the negative end. Like that. Okay, so electricity flows through here. As it flows through here, it lights up the bulb and then flows back into the battery to complete the circuit. Okay, now what scientists discovered was that whenever an electric current flows around the wire, they got a magnetic field. So almost like a little circle a force field spreading out from the wire. Okay, so if we did this, what we would find is, let's draw it in, there is a circular magnetic field around a wire. So I'm drawing this really badly. I'm sure you can probably draw this much neater than me. Okay, so first thing you need to do, can you copy this in? And you need to write something fairly straightforward, like whenever uh, an electric current flows, you also get a magnetic field. Okay, so simple sentence like that. So 
pause the video, draw this in, and then you can even add a little bit of extra detail. So because it's flowing, you can actually add little arrows to show that it's sort of flowing kind of in that direction. So like in a circle, so around like that. Again, your drawings are probably going to be much neater than mine. Okay, it's one of the problems with drawing this with a mouse. So please pause the video now and then uh, have a quick go at that. Off you go, please. Okay, welcome back. So the experiment that we were going to do was we were going to build our very own electromagnet. So what we've got are a couple of batteries, some wire, and some metal rods. Now, I want you to just think for a moment, and you can, again, pause the video if you need to, how could you make an electromagnet from this? Right, well, the way it works is like this. What you would do is you'd have a battery, and you'd connect your wires to the end of the battery, and then you would wrap your wire around your metal core like this. Now, what would happen is this, something rather strange, okay? As the electric current flows around the wire, remember what I said a moment ago, around your wire, you get a magnetic field. Well, that magnetic field essentially extends into this metal core, even if the wire is insulated, in fact, especially if the wire is insulated, okay? So what happens is if this core is made from a magnetic material like steel or iron, well, then that will become a magnet in its own right with a north and a south pole, just like the magnets that you learned about last lesson, except there's one big difference. If you turn the electricity off, this does not stay a magnet. The magnet disappears. And this is really useful because it means you can turn a magnet on or off rather than, say, the ordinary magnets that you would use, say, on your fridge. They're always magnets. These magnets you can turn on and off. And that's really useful. So what I would like you to do is pause the video and draw something like this up. OK, and just explain what's going on. So as the current flows, the magnetic field magnetizes the core and turns it into an electromagnet. So wherever you're up to, pause the video. And if you need to, you can play that bit back. OK. And explain what is going on here. OK, off you go, please. OK. Now, what we were planning on doing was building our own electromagnets. And as I said, hopefully we will. Um, in assignments, there is a video link to um, a documentary which I'd like to watch on magnets. Now, the first half is just about normal magnets. The second half is more about electromagnets. So you can just watch and enjoy the first half. It's about eight, nine minutes. The second half, which is about 10 minutes, is all about electromagnets and I'd like you to make five to ten clear bullet points about electromagnets from the video specifically about how you increase the strength of an electromagnet because the presenter is going to do an experiment very similar to the one that you would have done okay so have a go at that and then in assignments there is also a task in Word that you should be able to do. Now, if you can't print it off and do it from there, you can just copy it straight into your book. Okay, so the video in total is about 20 minutes long, and the task should take you about 10 minutes to complete once the video is finished. I'm also going to put a challenge task in there for those of you who finish early, okay, because the lesson should be about 45 minutes in total. Right, so Good luck, and I will be online for the at the end in a moment. I just want to tell you one more thing. Okay, so you can pause this video now, and then what will happen is watch the video, have a go at the assignment, and then I'll tell you one more thing just before we finish. Okay, off you go. So you've watched the documentary, and you've ho hopefully now uh, done the sheet. 
Uh, the last thing you need to do is this. So next to your diagram, a magnetic field is produced when an electric current flows through a coil of wire. So you can add to your diagram or you can draw it separately if you want. And as you can see, as the current goes in, the current flows through the wire and out to, and connects back up to the battery. But in doing so, it makes this material into a magnet with its own magnetic field, which you should be familiar with. And that's how we create an electromagnet. Right, so the rules governing electromagnetism. You can make an electromagnet stronger by, and you do need to write these down because these are very, very important, okay? Increasing the number of coils. Or increasing the electric current. Okay, but those are the two ways in which you can make an electromagnet stronger. There is one other thing which is very important. The core must be made from magnetic material. Now, a lot of you will think well, that's just metal, and any metal will do. Well, no. Actually, there are only a few metals which are naturally magnetic and which will attract a magnet. And those are these. Iron, nickel, and cobalt. Okay, those are the only naturally occurring metals which are magnetic. Okay, so if you had, say for example, a core made out of aluminium, it wouldn't work. Okay, uh, some of you might notice that steel is missing from there, but steel isn't actually a naturally occurring metal. It's man-made. It's a combination of iron and carbon. So, although it is magnetic, it's not naturally magnetic. Okay, but you know what? We'll include it in brackets because it is made from iron. Okay, so these are the things that you must have in your book. So, the final point is I'd like to copy these into your book, and then that's it for the day. Okay, very well done, please. Make sure you upload your work and I will see you all next week.